Hey everyone, uh, this is Damian Roskill. Um, thank you very much for joining us today on our webinar about measuring web performance. Uh, I'm extremely delighted to have our guest today. Um, in fact, I'll just move right into that slide. So um, uh, let's let's start with an agenda. So we'll start. We're, we're going to start by doing introductions of of myself and, and Alexander, and then we're going to talk for a few minutes about AppNeta. I'm going to try and keep this as brief as possible because I know that most of you are on the line not to hear us talk about AppNeta, but instead to hear us uh, to hear um, the compelling um, stories that that Alexander is here to talk about. Then Alexander is going to take over and he's going to talk about his experience doing cl monitoring cloud performance at QAD. And hold on one second. It's not a webinar without a glitch. And then we'll and then we'll get into Q and A. Um, so I'm the chief marketing officer here at AppNeta. I'm responsible for all uh, marketing operations across the company, um, and I'm extremely excited to be joined here by Alexander, who's a program manager and R&D at, at QAD. Um, Alexander heads up a number of really, really interesting initiatives at QAD, and QAD itself is a really um, fascinating uh, and growing company. And so I think he's going to be able to provide some really unique perspective on both moving to the cloud and also application and uh, network performance monitoring in general. Thanks, Damien. Before uh, before we get started, let's let's talk just a little bit about Abneta. So um, Abneta's focus is on the application performance monitoring space, and we like to say that we're the only solution that provides um, application performance monitoring across both the, the across the apps you develop, those business critical applications that you're using every day to drive your business, and the networks that join them. We have about 500 customers. We're a 100% SaaS platform. We've got endpoint deployments in over 100 countries. Um, and we're collecting, at this point, over 100 billion daily metrics, which wows even me. Um, and then this is a selection of our customers here on the right side, um, just a, a small section of some of the, the great customers that we've got. Um, obviously, we're here with one of my favorite customers, QAD. So, uh, we're, uh, we're excited to have them on, on the call. Let me take a, a minute here to talk about what, what I think is the, the big picture of what's going on out in the marketplace. And that's that end user experience is driving business. It drives every aspect of business. And that, that, that's true for whether we're talking about um, if you're an e-commerce provider and you're selling online or if you're a business that's using SaaS applications, whether it's Salesforce, ServiceNow, NetSuite, whatever it is, you're using those to drive your business forward. And that end user experience is going to define how people feel about your brand and, and how they feel about your company overall. For retailers, the difference between a four second uh, page load and a two second page load is is, is direct revenue. But for people that are using SaaS applications as well to drive their business, there are enormous productivity losses from slowness and application failure. But at the same time that, that, that that's happening, let's take a look at what's happening on the, in the IT environment. First, apps are being deployed in an enormous number of ways, whether it's in the cloud, containerized, uh, using VMware as QAD uses, uh, enormous number of options out there. The sort of common thread through all of them is that all these methods are distributing our applications. They're distributing them across a wide variety of hosting environments and in a large number of geographic areas. The other thing that's happening is that our apps are increasingly relying on other applications in order to give their functionality. Um, I think a, a growing trend amongst most companies is to really look at yourself and say, what are our core capabilities? What are our core differentiators? And then anything that falls outside of that, we should really look at how to partner or outsource that. And the movement toward APIs is just another segment of that. Um, so you might look at, you know, do we really need to own registration? Do we really need to own payments? Are those the places where we actually 
actually bring value to our customers. And if you're not, um, if those aren't the places that you're getting value, well then it makes sense to start thinking about partnering with somebody. The third thing is that this rise of the mobile-based app user, and, and this is important not just because as this line states that, the, that it's going to drive record levels of back-end load, um, but I think it's also important because when we think about how mobile users access networks, they roam from uh, you know, 4G networks to Wi-Fi networks back and forth. But the point is, is that it's all over, generally over infrastructure that you own or only partially or only partially own. And that means that as more and more applications move into mobile environments, there's going to be less vi visibility of application and network performance uh, for, for IT ops. So the result here is increasing complexity. So we've got applications being deployed lots of different ways. We've got uh, lots of different people uh, li uh, accessing those applications uh, from hundreds or thousands of locations. And at the same point in time, um, my visibility as an IT operations person or as a network operations person has actually gone down. I don't have access to any of the devices because they all live out on the public networks. Uh, so the question is, is how do I deal with that? Here at Netta, the way we think about it is that we, we provide solutions that give you the complete picture. So we start at the end user. Our solutions start at the end user, whether that's in a branch office or employees that are accessing um, via mobile device, accessing through Wi-Fi inside your company firewall or outside your company firewall. Then we provide a very unique technology that I'll talk about in a second um, that, that allows us to really look at the application delivery pathway and see all the steps that go into it. And then actually into the applications and, um, and into application platforms, whether that's platforms such as Amazon Web Services and Azure, or SaaS-based applications like Salesforce or ServiceNow, or actually into the applications themselves. So, you know, if you've got an application, we can actually instrument that application uh, and provide visibility all the way through into, um, into the individual tiers of that application. I also want to talk, take a second to just talk a little bit about that, that application delivery pathway because it's really what makes us very unique. We call this technology true path. And it's a, it's a unique and, as it states here, patented technology. And it really focuses on this idea of providing active continu and continuous measurement. So what it does is it sent, essentially it's designed to send out bursts of small packets over the actual pathway that your application travels on. And then we look at the packets as they return and we're able to discern lots of different information about that. Unlike other device-centric device solutions that are out there in the marketplace, we get uh, the actual application pathway, and that allows us to monitor the application as your end user sees and experiences it, rather than looking at derivative metrics such as uh, the information coming back over a BGP, uh, BGP data coming from a, from a router. Um, and we're the only vendor to have this and provide this this type of performance monitoring, and we can provide it over a wide range of networks, um, and it can utilize be accessed either utilizing uh, CMP on layer three or UDP on layer four in the case of a, a dual-ended configuration. We deliver all this through one platform. We call it APM for all, but. Uh, the idea behind it is that by accessing the app, AppNetta Performance Manager, your developers and your IT ops, your DevOps and your IT ops have access to the same view of the total health of your applications. And we deliver this through four core modules. And we're going to be concentrating on the three on the bottom row, what we call APM for IT ops. Um, but uh, the, the three that we're concentrating on today are our synthetic monitoring, transaction monitoring tool, which is AppView, 
our network health to tool, which is called PathView, and our application-aware traffic analysis tool, which is called FlowView. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Alexander to give us uh, some background on QAD and talk about how he's using Appnetta tools and the kind of, more generally, what kind of problems he, he deals with. So over to you, Alexander. Thanks, Damien. Uh, great, uh, great introduction there, great story. Uh, yes, yeah, so about, about uh, QAD, uh, Cloud ERP, so we're an ERP vendor. Uh, we we uh, write the ERP software, and ERP is really, you know, a, a lot of people look at it as administrative. Uh, some people deal with it uh, when they're purchasing, uh, requisitions, etc. cetera. Um, if you're in IT, you know, you might have to put requisitions in. Uh, our market, uh, we're focusing on manufacturing companies, and ERP goes all the way into the shop floor, you know, uh, actually producing the product and uh, also, all the logistics. We want to make sure that uh, when something is uh, is is sold, it, it makes it to the customer. That our materials we need uh, from our subcontractors and our raw materials make it in. So we're um, you know our software is 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 quite extensive. Um, our company is global um, in in both development as well as presence and delivery, and we obviously. Uh, our customers require um, very reliable application performance, and um, especially when that application is in the cloud. Uh, you mentioned user experience. Um, you know, we're now talking to devices directly, right? So we have devices and um, and product lines hooked up to uh, to the internet, and all of that has to work very well. Uh, a couple of customers, because we do. Um, uh, deliver across various industries. Um, I've picked a couple from uh, our website. We have nice videos about as well. But it's automotive here, uh, medical um, devices, uh, na nature products. Convita Honey might have used it sometime, and jewelry. It, it goes all over, and uh, the list the list is very long. Um, so that's a little bit about us. Um, I say the QED environment, or I should say my environment, is I'm, I'm in charge of the product center. And this is where we do all of our uh, development work. We manage the life cycle of our product uh, in the product center. So we deploy environments for development. We deploy them for demos, training, customer support. And um, as the software has been growing and getting more complex, uh, we've been able to leverage um, self-service cloud portals to allow our end users to uh, bring up environments without having to install the software uh, from scratch. And what it looks like, it's usually a couple of virtual machines. Uh, uh, a full suite of products might actually be something like uh, eight virtual machines, 12 CPUs, and 48 gigs of RAM. So you can you can see that as a quite a uh, extensive uh, application. Um, key here is that the users aren't just QED employees, but partners and customers are also able to check out environments. And uh, that's not to actually run their business, but it's to learn how the software works, um, to learn about what's new, to do proof of concepts, POCs, those, those types of things, and, uh, and so on. Now, our problem is, as we are moving everything to the cloud, the, uh, I was mentioning the application was getting more com complex, so for somebody to do some development and having to do install the, the product or with maybe some additional add-ons, you know, was getting more complicated. So it's become more centralized, you know, for our, uh, for our developers, our demo people, uh, our customer support staff, you know, they check out in a complete set of software uh, as, as it's being built. And also for our customers, uh, we, you know, we are delivering our ERP in, in the cloud. That's why we call it cloud ERP. And so for our customers, they are also expecting to access the application uh, on, online. And so users demand a great experience. And um, 
as we are moving everything into a central location or maybe a couple of locations, um, you, you get some people that might be dissatisfied because their network connection isn't up to par. And sometimes we hear about a sales rep trying to do a demo and it, it, it didn't go well. I sometimes, um, you know, if you like watching TV and, you know, crime series and things like that, um, something that would used to happen is somebody say a murder happened, like a, a sales opportunity went, uh, went bad. And then they come back to you and say, hey, it was your system. And so now you have to figure out what, uh, um, what might have happened. And there's no body and all the witnesses have scattered. <laughs> and, you know, how do you, how do you prove what the problem was? Was it, uh, was it the, uh, the environment, the, the virtualization? Was it the network? And obviously the network is the slowest resource in many cases in the whole stack of uh, uh, technology that we provide, um, the network is often the slowest and so also the most critical. So that was a little bit describing the problem and the sentiments we would have to deal with sometimes. So what we wanted to do, especially also for our sales staff, was create a professional assessment uh, so that people know before they do their demos, before they show, show off the software, that they know that they have a good connection. And, you know, obviously, if there is a problem after the fact, it's nice if you can see uh, what happened. But that was a really a good, good thing for us to improve process. And also, um, at deploying AppMeta in our data center, uh, it turns out that some network paths, even within the data center, can be uh, overloaded. So you want to know what's going on at a, a fairly deep level, all the way from the end user uh, to wherever the applications live and how they interact. And so also, AppNet is deployed in major development offices, uh, either as virtual or physical appliances, and they constantly monitor the performance of the actual application. And so what we're measuring there is how does our, how does our portal work, and are we able to provide a performance service level agreement. So that's a little different from just saying our application is up, is up and running. Um, the real thing here is, uh, is the application uh, delivering uh, to the user? Are the users able to complete their tasks? And uh, AppDex is another um, uh, measurement that, uh, that AppData provides. And that's a um, more uh, objective number on how the application is performing, uh, leveraging a script, a uh, synthetic script to go through the application, perform a number of actions. And so now we can compare how all these locations uh, are, are doing and which one, is, uh, which one is better. So the results, I, I copied a couple of screens from earlier this year. Um, I'll start with the top one, application performance summary. I get one of those every day, and I can look at it online, and I can see, you know, how's the entire stack of technology doing, including how is it being perceived by all of our remote offices. And so as you can see, we're at 99.077% in uh, satisfactory performance for all of our remote offices, and that was not ever really the case uh, before. Another view is kind of behind there, the production R&D applications. We have a whole list of applications, uh, the ticket system we use, the, uh, the applications we use for R&D, checking code, all that kind of stuff, but also our portal, uh, which is called qpc.qd.com. And you can see that for every location, um, this synthetic script is executed and it shows us exactly how long it takes and obviously if you're on top of the application uh, you can get through a script very quickly and if you're in Ireland or in Shanghai it might look different and I mentioned before we can now compare these values and if somebody in Antwerp says hey you know for, for us the application is not so uh, not so quick you know, you would expect maybe uh, uh, China to be slower, but here you can uh, you can see what's what's actually going on and how many exceptions there are.
Now, another um, uh, topic, as we are, you know, R&D, I service our research and development and, and a lot of uh, other users. Um, working with IT, there are a lot of applications where we're looking at things like, well, hey, should, should we move this application into the cloud? So, you know, we could move our source code control, we can move our R&D development applications into the cloud, and, and does that make sense? And so um, one of the exercises we went through, once we said, well, it might make sense for this stack of applications, um, we, we did some tests and we tried to see how's the user experience going to be uh, for all these purposes when we're no longer running that application in our own data center, but we're running it everywhere else. And as you can see, you know, from from the reports, the, the user experience wasn't going to be uh, um, uh, successful or, or acceptable unless we uh, invested, you know, additional money into, into that project. So in this case, we decided uh, let's not do that. You know, let's, uh, let's keep that application uh, in, in-house and uh, maybe look at it again some other time. So that was an interesting, um, an interesting exercise we went through to say, yep, that's not going to work for us. So lastly, uh, QAD is also enhancing the, the ERP application. So we have acquired companies over time. There's a, it's, a, it's a, a broad set of applications. And we're also creating an entirely new user experience. We call it the Channel Islands Initiative. We've, we've written about it before. And um, we're making good headways. We, we were on our way to our second release of this new user experience out there. And we're really defining the user experience. So a, a lot of user experience comes from having all the right information at your fingertips. And uh, so when you change your application, you can make the, uh, the experience much better already. And you can imagine that we want to make sure that um, even after optimizing the screens that users look at and the data that they have access to, that their experience when they're clicking on things is also going to be constantly measured. So our next steps, uh, having done what we've done with it, Meta, uh, we've, we've uh, improved our, our operations, if you will, our process. Uh, um, but what we would like to do is also monitor the performance of our actual application. So right now, I was men mentioning, I'm measuring the applic how, the, how the portal does. And the portal is what users use to deploy their environments. And then once the environment is deployed, they'll access the product. And I'd like to be able to know exactly how each instance uh, is performing. And um, the other thing is I'd like to integrate monitoring with the, the DevOps experience uh, overall. And that means that as, as we're deploying things, as we're running tests, uh, we can uh, bring in the AppNeta monitoring and the reports out um, in real time. And also, we want to extend the capability to our cloud customers. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that our, that our cloud customers might face similar challenges. And, you know, as what's really good for our bottom line is if a customer signs up to use our application, you know, there's probably 100,000 functions in ERP that users could benefit from, from using. And if the experience in the product isn't good, those users might um, might decide uh, that they're going to use their spreadsheet or some other method. So it's really important for us to keep our uh, customers happy and to expand that uptake of, uh, of users. So in summary, um, being able to demonstrate application performance satisfaction is expected. And it's key when delivering in the cloud. And this is, uh, for me, been a couple of years in the making. And uh, the only thing that really quieted down any noise, any complaints at all, is when I can prove that I'm uh, delivering uh, on these SLAs. Um, using AppNeta, 
the network and application performance monitoring, it eliminates a significant amount of root cause analysis time. So if somebody uh, uh, puts in a call and say, hey, there's a, I'm having a performance issue, um, knowing where not having to look is, is, is very good as well. So we're, we're saving a lot of time there. And another thing is that at the moment, AppNeta ties into QED's processes. So we can uh, prevent problems. You know, if we have new hires that go into the field, they get familiarized with the tools. And um, if somebody is working from home and they're doing a lot of customer presentations, you know, we offer them that assessment so that we know that when they're demoing to clients that that's always going to go, uh, go well. That was my uh, summary. Um, Thanks for I that. think we have time. Yeah, we have time for some Q and A, and Damien, uh, over to you. Yeah, well, before before we get to that, I just want to thank you again for for the insight. I did have a question for you, which is, when you talk about um, putting, you know, measuring the performance of your cloud customers, is it common that your customers will customize the ERP application and then push it out to their customers, so to speak? And is that the kind of situation you're talking about, or is it sort of from, say, the factory floor back to the ERP system that's that's hosted in a QAD cloud? Well, Damien, I think uh, it's it's the latter. I mean, yes, of course, customers will uh, will make make changes, and uh, the way these software platforms work is that you know whether you're using Salesforce or other applications, you can customize, you can do whatever you want with it. And um, so our customers do that too. But I'm more thinking about, you know, a customer is uh, opening up uh, uh, another site uh, somewhere where they're going to be doing manufacturing. And, you know, it should just naturally run into uh, the uh, monitoring so that, um, so that we know how well um, their users and their devices uh, are experiencing the application. So it, it, there's a lot of stuff we're already measuring, um, you know, at a high level like the network latency and all that kind of stuff, right? Any any company these days that that's across the several sites will uh, will have some monitoring in place. But um, when you start using cloud applications, when you start uh, um, when, when your entire business process starts depending on having access to the cloud, uh, it becomes more imperative that you you measure how is that application actually working because uh, so so often um, you know we've seen that there are some latency issues or are some problems and they're dismissed you know by uh, maybe the network guys um, you know it's like oh everything looks good here. And uh, if, if you have all that information together where from multiple locations you're, you're looking at that application, uh, you can in instantly tell uh, where, where you're going to look next. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was really interesting in your summary also talking about uh, working it into a DevOps flow, so um, really pulling together those different audiences that are obviously developing the applications as well as the operational side of deploying the app. Um, I, I, it sounds like a really great next step for you guys. Um, I don't want to hog your time. I'm going to uh, open it up to, to questions. So, uh, Justina, do we, do we have any questions? Sure. Um, thank you again, um, Alexander and Damien, for all your insights today. And thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us. Uh, I just wanted to mention one quick thing for everyone on the line. We are going to be offering a special um, offer for an extended one-month trial of Epneta's APM for IT Ops product suite um, for everyone on the webinar today. So look out in your emails for that shortly. And um, without further ado, let's get to our Q&A session. We have a a few questions that have come in. Um, so one of the questions is, um, I know, Alexander, you talked a lot about, um, you know, how you put an AppNet in place and how you your your kind of uh, top use cases. Um, but we're um, 
we have a question here where someone was curious as to how you handled all of this, um, all of these kind of challenges before you had a NETA in place. How, how did you, you go about that? Um, yeah, it was more like a CSI episode, as I said, you know, uh, somebody says something wasn't working quite well and uh, basically you have to do a full assessment, you have to gather all kinds of information and there's lots of big gaps so sometimes you just never know uh, whether there was a network issue and, and, and I also mentioned earlier that uh, the network is the slower uh, resource compared to all the other uh, pieces of the technology stack if you, if you go from network to RAM uh, to CPU to, uh, uh, to disks you know there's you know the network is the slowest so if you don't have good measurements there or Hi everyone. Okay. Uh, oh, here we go. Alexander, are you there? Yes, I think I was muted oh, by an organizer. <laughs> All right. So I don't know how much of that answer made it through. Great. Sure. Um, so Alexander, we're just uh, again we were just talking about a little bit of. W about what you had in place and how you pushed these these challenges before you had Upneta. Right. Yeah. So we we basically we had gaps. There were uh, uh, certainly we didn't have a lot of the data available, and we could only gather it after the fact. Um, so it was it was difficult. And with these tools in place, uh, we're able to bridge that gap. And things are no longer a CSI episode. Uh, we're actually able to go back in time and say, yeah, uh, we can see your problem <laughs> or, uh, or not. Or say, hey, we need to be looking somewhere else. And, and most of the tools, like I said, aren't gathering these statistics over time. Uh, they only go back a little bit of time and um, uh, that sort of thing. Or they're not there at all. I hope that makes sense. Great. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And I think this leads to our next question really well, leads into the, to the next question we had from someone. Um, in, in the use cases that you spoke about, and obviously you had all these challenges, um, and you didn't have a tool like AppNeta, what kind of made you come across AppNeta, or how did you come across AppNeta, and what other vendors um, did you kind of consider, and, and why did you go with AppNeta? Um, well, I, I came across it through some, some online articles and decided to, to give it a try. Uh, after all, it was very easy to, uh, to just hook up my application. My portal is accessible uh, online, so um, I, I, I did a test run. And, you know, I, I chose it after working with our IT networking guys, etc., and uh, we found that you know, was a good complement to other tools that uh, that we already have. So it was a good fit. I mean, we have some other uh, tools as well, such as Solo Wins and, and things like that. But um, I don't think, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. Great. Um, and uh, I know we are kind of coming up to the end of our time here. I'm just gonna. I think we only have time for about one or two more questions. So. Um, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, the next question is really about, um, you know, you talked a lot about how um, you considered moving, uh, you know, certain apps to the cloud and, and how you went about um, using AppNeta for that purpose. Um, how do you decide whether or not to move an app to hybrid infrastructure and how do you go about doing that? Okay. Yeah, I think the the there's three uh, items that, that come to mind there. So uh, one is when you um, 
want to move, I mean, you're, gonna, you're deciding to move an application. If, if it's a commoditized or a native cloud application, uh, it's basically just, hey, is this going to be a good fit for us? And you might, uh, you might go ahead with that. And that's the same reason that our customers might select QAD in the cloud, right? Uh, number two is for our internal use cases, like R&D, applications might be very data intensive, so they might be very big, and putting them in the cloud is not such a, an easy decision because now all the users are going to have to be downloading their stuff. And so it kind of depends on um, what part of the application or what part of the infrastructure do you want to move? Where should it, where should it go? And then the last thing uh, that we would look at is once you have the right strategy, uh, so you've decided to maybe move to a commoditized solution or a native solution or, you know, whatever the strategy is you chose, uh, then you need to look at the user experience to make sure that uh, you're going to make people happy or happier instead of uh, making them more frustrated. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, thank you so much for, um, you know, your comprehensive answers. Um, I think, uh, you know, we have time for one more question, and uh, then we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, you, we, we didn't really touch on this a lot during today's session, but um, we're curious, to, um, you know, in terms of, uh, as an ERP company, um, with these types of tools, how do you measure business value and ROI from, you know, app and network performance monitoring tools? Okay, that's a really good question, and um, th there was a slide earlier from Damien talking about how applications got more uh, or are getting more complex. Um, just just before we we actually had a, quite a large group that did what I do in, in our company, and we were able to uh, put more of these people back into uh, core research and development jobs, and actually contribute more to product rather than the supporting infrastructure and uh, that went very well for the first uh, for the for, for the 2008 to 2012 time frame if you will and then things started getting more complex again and so we need to we need to keep up with that so I, I think uh, uh, having these technologies help us will allow us to not having to invest a lot of uh, human resources into uh, these infrastructure roles. Um, so, um, and then it, it's shortened our time uh, to find root cause just about every time. And um, so, and, and then of course, you know, if you're talking about how our, how our field service uh, salespeople use it, you know, if you have a really bad demo that can uh, make or break your quarter, so, um, you know, we we should be uh, we should be evaluated by our customers or our prospective customers by the the um, the nature of our application and how the fit is, and not by uh, the quality of the network connection being an issue. So th those are kind of a, a few things that uh, I could quantify, and um, I, w I would say it adds up. I hope that makes sense. And you, you, I think you might be muted there if you wanted to respond. Okay, great. Yeah, I think we're having some technical difficulties with um, Damien's line, so I apologize for that. Um, I know we're at the end of today's session, so um, we wanted to thank everyone on the still on the line for uh, your attendance. Um, one quick reminder is that we're sending an email after the after today's session with the recording in the deck, if you'd like to share it with your colleagues or listen in it again. Um, the email will also include a link for you to request an exclusive one-month trial of our APM for IT Ops product suite. Um, again, I just wanted to thank everyone who's still on the line and thank our presenters, Damien Roskill and Alexander Ver Verheren. Thank you, Alexander, for joining us and telling us and sharing your AppNeta story with us today. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you.